Hey everyone, here's another lesson in the Medical Terminology of the Basic series. This is lesson five. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about more basic but very important prefixes and suffixes that weren't covered in the previous lessons. So we're going to first discuss location and direction modifiers that weren't discussed in previous lessons. The first prefix we're going to talk about is APO, which means away from or separation. The next one is acro. This means extremity, so you can think of your arms and legs. And a word that you may hear is acrocyanosis. That just means cyanosis of your extremities. The next prefix is anter or anterio. This simply means in front or to the front. So you can think of the word anterior. The next one is amb or ambi. Uh, this means both sides. So you can think of ambidextrous. So you're using both hands. The next one is amphi, so or amphio. This also means both or both sides. You can think of amphibian or amphiphilic. The next prefix is posterior or posterior. This means behind or referring to behind. So we can think of the word posterior. So that's pretty easy to remember. The next one is dextro. Uh, this means right or to the towards the right. And in this case, you might here of the condition dextrocardia when your heart is pointing toward the right side or the opposite of where it should be. The next one is levo, this uh, means, or levo, this means left or towards the left. The next prefix is retro, this means behind or backward, so you can think of retrospective. And the next prefix relating to location and direction is LT or ELT, um, and this means high, so you can think of altitude. So there's also some cellular modifiers that weren't discussed in previous lessons. So the first one is athero or ather. This means fat, so you might have heard of atherosclerosis. The next prefix is albumin or albumino. This simply refers to the protein albumin, which is in our blood. The next prefix is band or bando. Uh, this actually just means bands, and really what it means is band cells or immature uh, white blood cells. So you think of, um, you might hear the word bandemia. Another prefix is amyl or amylo. This means starch. You might have heard of amylose or amylase enzyme. And the suffix caucus means round, so you might hear of certain bacteria or bacterial cocci. This just means that they're round-shaped bacteria. So now we're going to move on to some more general terms. The first one is andro. This means male, so you can think of androgens. The next prefix is gyne or gyno or gynaco. This means female, so you can think of gynecology. The next prefix is anim. This means life, so you can think of the words animal or animated. The next prefix is calc. Uh, this means stone, so you can think of renal calculi or kidney stones. Those are renal calculi. The next prefix is arachno. Uh, this means spider, so you can think of arachnophobia or a fear of spiders. The next prefix is air or aero. This means air or gas, so that's pretty easy. You can think of the word aerodynamic. The next prefix is abrase or abrazo. This means to rub away, so you can think of the word abrasion. Port. Port means to carry or mobile, so you can think of transport or export or portable. They all mean to carry. The next prefix is phone. Uh, you can think of sound in this case, so you can think of the word phonetic. And the uh, next prefix is cryo. Uh, this means cold, so you can think of cryogenics or cryotherapy. They all relate to cold. So some more general terms. The next one is the prefix auto, which means self. And the next one is allo. Uh, this means different or more uh, appropriately this means different human. So it's someone different within the same species 
And I say that because the next prefix is xeno, which means also means different, but uh, usually of a different species. Um, also means foreign or alien. Another prefix is coano. This means a funnel. The prefix cord means string. So you might hear the words cordae tendine when you're looking at cardiac anatomy. So cord just means string. The next prefix is chyme, which means juice or fluid. So you might think of chyme that's released from your stomach into your duodenum or the enzyme chymotrypsin. The next suffix is cilia, which means hair. So you might have heard this in um, cellular biology. The next one is carn. Uh, this prefix carn means flesh, so you can think of carnal. The next prefix is carcin or carcino. This means cancer or tumor. So you can think of the word carcinogenic or something that um, is cancer producing or cancer causing. The next one is crypt, which means hidden. So you might have heard of cryptorchidism. The next one is diplo. diplo. This means double. And another prefix um, is dolicho. This means long or abnormally long. So you might have heard of dolicho colon. Uh, this means um, a very long colon or an abnormally long colon. So we're next going to look at processes and process modifiers. So the prefix asthenia or asthenio means weakness. The prefix alter means to change. So you can think of alteration. Asper or aspiro or aspirate or aspirato all mean inhaling or inhalation of something. So you can think of the word aspiration. So or you aspirate something, you're inhaling something. The next prefix is anti, so this means before. And pre also means before. So you think might have heard of antipartum or prepartum. And post means after, so you might have heard of the word postpartum. The next prefix is primi, um, which means first. So you might have heard of um, primitive or primal, all relate to something being first. The next one is acoust or acousto, which means to hear or hearing. Also related to this is odd or audio, also means hearing. So you might hear of audiology or an, something acoustic or like an acoustic guitar, all relate to hearing. Another prefix is aux. This means to grow or enlarge. And another um, term is ben or benny or bene which means good. So you might have heard of benign or benefit all mean good. So the next medical term is ambule and that means walk or to walk. So you might have heard of the words ambulate or ambulation. They literally mean to walk. So ambule means walk or to walk. The next one is ankle or ankylo. This means fused, fusion or something not straight. So you might have heard of the medical condition ankylosing spondylitis. So this has to do with fuse or fusion of spinal vertebrae. The next prefix is contra. This means against or to counter. You can think of the word contraindicated. The next suffix is crine or crin. And this means to secrete. So you can think of endocrine, paracrine, and exocrine, all relating to um, hormones that are actually secreted. The next one is rage or ragia. Uh, this means heavy flow or bursting with blood. Uh, this is typically used when we talk about um, something that's bleeding heavily, um, rhino, ragia or menorrhagia, these all relate to um, heavy bleeding. The next suffix is malaysia. 
Uh, this means softening. The next one is tresia. Uh, this means uh, perforation or opening. You can think of the words at atresia. Then we're also going to talk some more about surgical processes. These are always important to know. So the suffix raffi or raffi means suture. The suffix klysis means irrigation or washing. The suffix desis means surgical union or surgical fixation. The suffix centesis means removal of fluid or aspiration. And the suffix graft means organ or tissue used for transplantation to replace something else. So that's what, a, what the suffix graft means. So now that we're all done going over all those medical terms, let's try to put them into practice. So the first word we're going to look at today as a practice problem is myasthenia. So if we break it down again, we look at the first portion of that word, my. My means muscle. Or, so you can think of my or myoclonus. These all relate to muscle. So my means muscle. And now we learn in this lesson that asthene, asthene means weakness. And we've learned in a previous lesson that ia, ia means an abnormal condition. So when we put this all together, it means an abnormal condition of muscle weakness. So myasthenia means a normal condition of muscle weakness. And you might have heard of the condition myasthenia gravis. This also uh, relates to muscle weakness. The next practice problem is osteomalacia. So again, we just break it down. So looking at the first portion of the word, osteo. Osteo means bone. In the second portion of the word, Malaysia, Malaysia means softening. We just learned this. So when we put it all together, osteomalacia literally means softening of the bones, and it's a softening of the bones due to inadequate mineralization. The next practice word we're going to look at is diplococcus. So again, we just break it down. So diplo, we learned in this lesson that diplo means double or two. And caucus, caucus is a suffix that means round, and it really means a round-shaped cell. So when we put this together, diplococcus means double or two round-shaped cells, and diplococcus is actually a type of bacteria. The next practice problem is xenograft. So what does xenograft mean? Well, again, when we break it down, xeno, xeno means different or foreign or alien. In graft, we just learned that graft means an organ or tissue used for transplantation to replace something. So when we put this together, a xenograft is really an organ or tissue from one, uh, from an animal of one species, so it's from a different species, transplanted to an animal or human of another species. So when we, for instance, might take um, some organ or tissue from a pig and we use it in a human, that's a xenograft. So it's from one different species to human. And xenograft is just one type of graft. There's also autografts and allografts. Um, an autograft is when you transplant a tissue from the same person. And an allograft is when you transplant a tissue from one person to another person. So that's just a little bit of a, um, a, little bit of a detour in our lesson here. But the next word we're going to talk about is arthrocentesis. So again, we break it down, arthro. Arthro, we've learned, means joint. And when we uh, look at the suffix centesis, we learn that centesis means removal of fluid or aspiration. So arthrocentesis means a removal or aspiration of fluid from a joint. And the last practice problem is gastrorhaphy. And when we break it down, gastro, gastro means stomach, and the raphi or raphi, we just learned, means suture. So gastrorhaphy or gastrorhaphy means suturing of the stomach. So anyways, guys, this was another lesson um, in the Medical Terminology the Basic series. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.